Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Kessler, a consultant specializing in science communication. It's Friday, September 23rd, and it's time for your Fusion News Update. Stories today include, one, new NRC report outlines options for regulating nuclear fusion. Two, Mansion holds hearing on commercialization of fusion energy. Three, world's largest fusion experiment, ITER, appoints new chief. Four, Japan to draft nuclear fusion strategy amid fierce global race. Five, Twisty Device explores alternative path to fusion. Six, NSE's Zach Hartwig wins 2022 FPA Excellence in Fusion Engineering Award. I also have a couple of bonuses for you at the end, so stick around. One, new NRC report outlines options for regulating nuclear fusion. Last week, the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC, released a preliminary white paper on the regulation of fusion energy devices. The paper presents three options for regulating fusion power as a utilization facility, as a byproduct material facility, or as a combination of the two. The utilization facility framework is what currently governs fusion power plants, while particle accelerators are managed under the byproduct material framework. While the final report is yet to come, the white paper shows that the NRC is considering regulating fusion separately from both existing and advanced fission reactor designs. Both the white paper draft and a Forbes article analyzing the implications of it are linked in the description. Two, Mansion holds hearing on commercialization of fusion energy. Last Thursday, September 15th, the U.S. Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources held a hearing on the U.S. federal government's role in commercializing fusion energy. The committee heard testimony from Dr. Scott Hsu from the U.S. Department of Energy, Professor Stephen Crowley from the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, Dr. Tim Luce from ITER, and Dr. Bob Mumpgard from Commonwealth Fusion Systems, or CFS, a Fusion Industry Association member. Three, world's largest fusion experiment, ITER, appoints new chief. The ITER Council has appointed a new director general, Dr. Pietro Barabashi, who will assume this role in October. Dr. Barabashi currently directs the European contribution to ITER and plans to prioritize the integration of member contributions with the central organization. He is taking over the role from Dr. Aisuki Tada, who has served as the interim director since the death of Dr. Bernard Bigot in May of this year. In other EATER news, the EATER organization also released a statement last week commemorating the contributions of Mikhail Gorbachev to the launch of the International Fusion Collaboration. Four, Japan to draft nuclear fusion strategy amid fierce global race. As part of a clean energy push, Japan is forming a panel and drafting a strategy for getting fusion energy on the grid by the middle of the century. This follows similar goals set by other countries, including the UK and China. Five, Twisty Device explores alternative path to fusion. Science reported on upgrades at Wendelstein 7X, a stellarator in Germany that achieved first plasma in 2015. Stellarators use the same twisted magnetic field as tokamaks, but achieve the field with a single set of three-dimensionally contorted magnetic field coils, as opposed to a tokamak's two sets of coils. While W7X demonstrated successful runs of hundreds of seconds in earlier campaigns, the past three years have been spent on coolant upgrades to the system that will allow W7X to run significantly longer, up to 30 minutes, and more energetic plasma experiments. W7X is expected to restart these experiments later this month, which should produce some interesting results for the fusion community. If W7X continues to perform as predicted, it will demonstrate the potential for multiple Stellarator-based fusion startups, including Fusion Industry Association members, Princeton Stellarators, Renaissance Fusion, and Type 1 Energy. According to Type 1 Energy co-founder David Anderson, with half-hour discharges, you're essentially steady state. This is a big deal. Six. NSE's Zach Hartwig wins 2022 FPA Excellence in Fusion Engineering Award. Professor Zach Hartwig from MIT has been selected as the recipient of the 2022 Excellence in Fusion Engineering Award by the Fusion Power Associates Board of Directors. This annual award has been given since 1987 to those with promise to influence the field of fusion. Zach, who was also one of my PhD advisors, is being recognized for his work developing high temperature superconducting magnets including a recent demonstration of a toroidal field coil with a 20 Tesla field as part of the MIT CFS collaborative effort to build Spark. Finally, check out the bonus fusion news this week. Some fusion news updates include an article on space.com covering the basics of fusion, including progress towards ITER. 
Also, as we reported last year, K-Star, an experimental tokamak facility in South Korea, achieved a combined time and plasma temperature milestone after the device ran for over 30 seconds at 100 million degrees Celsius. Both popular mechanics and new scientists recently reported on the accomplishment, in addition to plans to upgrade the first wall from carbon to tungsten. Next, podcasts from the BBC and Columbia and YouTube videos from IEEE and Electric Future cover fusion energy in different ways and feature Fusion Industry Association members, CFS and Helion. Check out the links in the description to watch and listen. And finally, CFS posted some pictures of their construction progress on Twitter. Check out the links in the description to see those. That's all for Fusion News this week. Stay tuned for our next update. Please like and subscribe for more Fusion News. And remember to see the links in the description if you want further information.